So I think pretty much anybody who's involved in 3D printing has considered 3D scanning. And the entry level to that is getting lower, but it's still in, in the hundreds. Um, and I don't do it very often. So I've been going down the software route and having a, uh, a P1S invited to join Maker World. Um, and in Maker World, there's a thing called Maker Labs. And that is a 3D scanner. I've tried some others, 3D Zephyr, I think one of them's called which is more for big topography, big buildings and, and landscapes, etc. And that's okay, but that's, that software is pretty damn expensive to buy. So looking for alternatives, I'm trying the AI scanner, which is built into Maker Labs. So we're gonna need a subject, and this is what I've come up with. Um, this is just a little model that's been kicking around in my drawer for, for many, many years. Um, but it's quite detailed, as you can see, there's lots of overhangs, um, lots of undercuts and a fair bit of detail, even down to the can of spinach and that anchor symbol on the on the side of his arm there, which is uh, raised. So it could be tricky to 3D scan. So first off, we need a video of the item. The, this is on a rotating table that I made quite a while ago. It's made using a, um, a microwave oven turntable motor. Um, and the, the base is something you can find on the uh, on the internet um, which gives you a, a variable background which you need to get a decent scan um, so yeah this is doing a 360 degree turn you can see I didn't even bother washing him <laughs> maybe it would have helped if I'd washed him so having copied that video file to your desktop um, you drop it into the software as requested um, and it will upload it it gives you an option of general or portrait mode portrait mode is for doing humans and live objects not sure what that does differently really but i've used general mode to to scan this image having done that you go next step and it uploads the file and then there does some computation to work out which part of the uh, video it's supposed to be scanning you can see it's made an error there it's actually put in two segments of my baseboard so create your own mask you do that by clicking on the various parts of the model so try clicking on his leg why didn't that work oh it's still loading <laughs> so we click on his leg and the foot and the body and the other foot yeah that came on and his head and not least the can of spinach and then we go create model okay now that took probably a couple of minutes just to upload the video file I need to start processing um, again this takes ages I think it probably took five to ten maybe ten minutes to do this computation I'll speed it up for you and there we go it's completed and once this loads in it should give there it is upside down <laughs> a little image of um, your object and you can move it around in the 3D space there. So you download the 3MF file or the STL file and then install that into the Bamboo Labs software. So we start a new project and import the 3MF model. Open it and it puts it there does it very small when you start out that's tiny it's only 16 mil high which is really too small the actual model something around about three times that I'd say probably bigger but we'll go at 300% to begin with and just type 300% into one of the boxes because it's linked there Type 300% in, enter, and it makes it bigger. Okay, I still don't think that's 
the right size but I'll do the maths later on see that um, bottom of his shoes there are quite lumpy so I'm going to have to position him so that he's flat um, or upright to the base to the print plate and then perform a cut so once I find out which button is the right one hang on uh, that's the yellow one there you go yeah so get that down to the right level and then perform the cut and then deselect it and delete the bit you don't want and now he should be standing on the base plate you can see there that he's got quite a bit of detail but this model is going to need support of course So I'll go over to support, select support, I like to use the tree type, perform the slice, okay and you can see that uh, I've got seams here which will sort of spoil the detail so I'll, uh, I'll make those random if I can ever find them. Um, while I'm in here I'll uh, add in extra wall loops because the neck on this model is really quite thin so we'll go six that should give it a bit of strength ah there they are under quality so we'll select random for the scene position and re-slice it um, so you can see the white dots there, that means that the, the seam is going to be all over the place. And send it to the, uh -huh, an error, that means that I haven't got it set to my P1S. It comes defaults for some reason to a carbon, um, X, X1 carbon, I haven't got one of those though. So anyway, so I have to re-slice it. And we'll do a bed level, I think, and send it to the printer. This print in reality took just over an hour to do. and here's the final result um, took quite some doing to remove the supports um, have to use a pair of snippers to do that there's some overhang underneath his chin for example we have to sand that out but when you look at the quality of the of the scan just from a very short video it, it's really quite good these pipe there has come out as well you can even see the tattoo on his arm of the anchor and uh, the foliage in the can of spinach scale slightly wrong there the, the uh, my print is just a little bit bigger than the original but that's just a bit of mathematics and uh, here's a close-up of him on the turntable as I said before some good detail just amazing from a short video like that um, some of the results I've seen from hand -held scanners aren't this good. Now, exactly what I'll use this for, I really don't know. I just wanted to experiment, really. Um, and I know people. some people like to make small plastic figures, and I suppose you can make a chess setup out of Popeye characters, for example, and that would be quite doable. You can do much larger objects. I did try and do a scan of my car using my drone and doing a 360 shot of it. And here you can see the video that I uh, uploaded to get the image. It's sped up slightly here. And here's the result. 
it's done something very strange here. It, even though there's no sky, it appears to have picked up some clouds, or or is that the grass? Don't know. But um, a lot of artifacts going on there. Anyway, I'll download the 3MF and we'll put it into Bamboo Labs and we'll have a bit of a close look at it. Okay, just bring the, the 3MF file in. And you can see all of that interference or noise, I suppose. So we'll have to level it first. Green one, that's it. Quite hard to get it to be flat, you just got to fiddle with it a bit. And then perform a cut. Do that there. And as before, deselect, just select the bit that you don't want and delete it. So, still really tiny, so I'll, uh, I'll boost it up so we can uh, get a close look at it. Put it up to something large like 500% and then you can see. that The problem with this model is, I think, is the reflection. Clearly that's the reflection of the windows but also of the body panels. So, it was a dull day as well. Um, when I did this video, but some of the details there, I mean, you can sort of see the wheels and you can see the tow bar and you can see the number plate kind of and the headlights, but it's not really printable, I don't think. It would need quite a lot of work to actually get it to a stage where it was worth printing. The downsides, it's quite slow, but what can you expect for something that's free? It, it also depends very much on the time of day that you do it. Living in Australia, I find that once the uh, Northern Hemisphere goes offline, then the time to to do these things is pretty quick. Uh, now it's evening in the uh, Northern Hemisphere and it's showing me here uh, 1.3 hours to upload and render a video. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I hope to see you again soon.